Hi everyone, good day. This is Dr. Vaughn. And again, for today we will be discussing the first topic sa ating finals. Diba? Sobrang bilis lang. We are already in our final term. And I would like to apologize because I cannot really open my camera because I really had a problem in connecting my camera sa laptop. I still don't know bakit hindi siya gumagana. But for today, sige lang. And the discuss natin for today will be all about your leukocytes development kinetics and function so first part ito is gonna be your granulocytes the second part of course sa next meeting as uh, a next week na yan you will be discussing um mononuclear cells so ang focus lang natin sa uh, leukocyte development kinetics and functions is all about your granulocytes nandiyan yung neutrophil yung eosinophil and your basophil so, ang ating main reference handout for this discussion will be your Rodox 5th edition. Or you may use the latest edition. So, for our learning objective for today, to describe the pathways and progenitor cells involved in the derivation of leukocytes from your hematopoietic stem cell to mature forms. Then, we will name the different stages of your neutrophil eosinophil, basophil development, and describe the morphology of each of these stages. And lastly, we will discuss the important functions of your neutrophils, eosinophils, and your basophils. So technically, ang focus lang talaga natin is to discuss all about your granulocytes. I know you are already familiar with this one because you already had a discussion sa ating prelims nung about sa ating hematopoiesis. So, when we say leukocytes, pag sinabi natin leukocytes, we all know leukocytes, white blood cells. Kaya tinawag siyang white blood cells because relatively colorless compared to other blood cells. And generally, alam natin na they play a role in fighting different infections. And it is classified according to the cell's granularity, nuclear segmentation or lobulation so depende kung ilang lobes ang ating nakikita and of course the function of these leukocytes again granulocytes are a group of leukocytes whose cytoplasm is actually filled with granules kaya siya tinatawag na granulocyte kasi nga yung cytoplasm niya merong granules as what we can see here there is granules with differing staining characteristics and whose nuclei are segmented or lobulated. Again, di ba? One way of classifying this WBC is through their presence of granularity, nuclear segmentation. Individually, they include your eosinophils with granule containing basic proteins that will stain with acid stains such as your eosin. Kaya nakikita natin sa eosin ang yung granules stains it color uh, it makes a color pink because of your eosin kasi yung eosin natin is pink to red and then your basophils with granules that are basophils natin this one the basophils uh with the granules that are actually acidic and stain with a basic stain such as methylene blue that's why the granules here color blue ang ating granules dito and lastly, we have your neutrophils with the granules that will react with both the acid and the basic stains, which give them a pink to, kina nyo, parang nagiging pink siya, to lavender color. Again, so the granules here will, uh, will, the color of the granules here will depend on its characteristic, whether it is an acidophilic or, acidophilic or basophilic. Because nuclear segmentation is actually Quite prominent in our mature neutrophils, they are they have also been called your PMNS. Diba yung tatawag natin na polymorphonuclear cells. Again, nuclear segmentation sa ating mature neutrophils is quite really prominent. Kaya tinatawag natin siya na polymorphonuclear cells or your PMN. Okay. Sa ating laboratory test for our WBC, of course, we have several tests that we are we can actually do that. Of course, this will be properly discussed in yung laboratory discussion, no? laboratory counterpart. We have your WBC count. Yung, we are just talking about the number of the WBC. Of course, we are not, um, hindi siya 
per cells, but rather the total count of your WBC. So differential count, of course, dito na yun mag magdedepende kung anong klaseng WBC ang mas nag-increase. Kung we're talking about neutrophils, eosinophils, that's your differential count. Meron na yung natawag na Schilling's index or your RNF count. So, Doc Vaughn, how do we differentiate your Schilling's index and your RNF count? Yung Schilling's index actually is a, actually it's like an age classification of your blood neutrophils, which is actually based in the increasing irregularity or lobulation sa ating nucleus, in which the classes are myelocytes, metamyelocytes, band forms, mature neutrophils. So therefore, you're just uh, you're just identifying what type of the uh, what type of the WBC in terms of its maturity, whether immature siya or mature, and you will be able to classify that myelocyte, metamyelocyte, etc. How about sa ating RNF count? Ang RNF count naman is actually a classification of your PMN neutrophils. So basically, classification ito ng ating neutrophils, and it is based on the number of lobes in the nucleus. Term stages, 1 to 5 respectively. Ah, kung may isang lobulation, that's gonna be group 1. May isang, may dalawang lobulation, that's gonna be your group 2. Tatlo, 3, so on and so forth. So there are only 5 groups sa ating neutrophils. So ito yung ating RNF count sa diagram na ito. The RNF count is actually the determination of the percentage distribution of the different types of neutrophils on the basis of their nuclear lobe. So, pag sinabi natin group 1, usually it's only 5 to 10 percent. Group 2, 25 to 30 percent. And group 3, it's around 45 to 47 percent. Mas marami kasi we all know neutrophils, ang normal na lobe, lobulation ng ating neutrophils is around 3 to 5. But for lobulation, it's only around 16 to 18 percent. And group 5 is around 2 percent. So, majority is really has three lobulation which is around 45 to 47%. So basic lang no, kung ilang lobulation, yan yung classification ng group na yan and you will be able to identify yung certain percentages by each group. Next, we have also your cytochemical stains. We have your non-enzymatic and your enzymatic. Of course, we will be able to identify the different characteristics of your WBC through their DNA or DNA content. And then we have also your immunophenotyping or your flow cytometry. We already we are already familiar with your flow cytometry, right? When we say immunotyping, immunophenotyping, it's actually detect the presence or absence of your WBC antigen. So yung specific kung meron ba siyang ganitong antigen or wala. These antigens are actually protein structures that is actually found sa ating interior ng ating WBC. And it could be unique or to specific cell types. So, magiging unique lang siya sa specific cell types and the stages of cell maturation. Kaya, kung merong antigen dito or wala, we could identify, ah, this gonna be the, uh, the stage of this cell. A typical but characteristic groupings are seen with a specific leukemias and lymphomas. Of course, pag meron siyang ganitong antigen or peri pag ganitong wala, this would also help us identify kung meron tayong specific na mga sakit like your leukemias and lymphomas. So basically, you will encounter this more sa ating laboratory discussion. But sa laboratory discussion, ang we discuss then is more of your WBC count and your differential count kasi ito talaga yung ginagawa natin sa laboratory. Your cytochemical and immunophenotyping, these are very mga high-grade type na mga tests and these are not really common here sa atin. Of course, sa mga, sa mga lalaking mga hospital like in St. Luke's, we have this kind of mga laboratory test. I guess we have a flow cytometry sa SVMCS as far as I remember. So again, our discussion for today is all about leukocyte development kinetics and function. When we say leukocyte kinetics, it's actually the dynamic forces that move the cells into and out of a different body compartment. Kumbaga, we are just talking about what are those forces, what are those factors that will help the cell move into or out of the different body compartments. Ano ba yung body compartments na gina-refer ko? It's actually your bone marrow, peripheral blood, and your tissues. We all know they are created sa ating bone marrow. So, what are those forces para 
yung production ng cells from the bone marrow pupunta sa blood and then if they need, are needed in the tissues ano naman ang kailangan para pumunta sila sa tissues and we will learn that that each of these cells sa granulocytes will have a specific factors or forces that will help them go to a specific compartment of course din nilalabas na naman yung mga mga interleukin mga cytokines etc so again let's review this kind of um maturation characteristics i know we already had a discussion with this one sa ating uh, erythropoiesis ay ito yung hematopoiesis natin sa prelim no you're already familiar with an immature and a mature cell so how can we differentiate an immature cells to a mature cell so these are the important parameters that we have to take note meron tayong cell size the presence of or absence of your nucleoli your chromatin your nucleus, the shape of your nucleus, the presence of lobulation, your cytoplasm, as well as your nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, your NCR. Tingnan muna natin sa immature cell. So, lakihan natin ang diagram ha. Ayan. This is your immature cells. Ito yung ating immature cells. So, what you can see, the cell size of our immature cells is large compared sa ating mature. Of course, of course, na, na maliit kasi. <laughs> Ganyan. Ganyan. So, again, ha, i-compare natin, ha. Ito yung immature, and this one is the mature one. Sige. Immature, the cell size is very large. Nucleoli is present. Of course, hindi kasi siya maka... Yung nuclei, nucleoli, hindi natin siya masyadong ma-appreciate sa light microscope lamang. So, hindi natin masyadong makita, but nucleoli is present in an immature cells. Then, the chromatin, these are fine and delicate, and as what you can see, the nucleus is round. How about the cytoplasm? Nakikita natin yung cytoplasm. It is basophilic. And how about the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio? It's very high, no? Mas mataas yung uh, ratio ng ating nucleus compared sa ating cytoplasm. Tignan nyo, malaki ang nucleus, maliit lamang yung ating cytoplasm para nakakover na yung nucleus ng buong cells. How about naman sa ating mature? Sige, lipat natin. Yan. This is your mature, the cell, compared to your immature cells. These are smaller. Your nucleoli, sorry, hindi ko pala makita yung parameters. Yung nucleoli natin is actually absent. And napapansin natin sa ating chromatin, it is actually coarse and clump. And your nucleus, pwede siyang round or pwede namang lobulated. It's lobulated or segmented. And the cytoplasm is actually less basophilic. Diba? Mas pink na dito compared dito na napaka, napaka basophilic sa ating immature compared sa ating mature na cells. And lastly, the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, mas mababa na yung ating nucleus ratio compared sa ating cytoplasm. Unlike here, di ba? Napakalaki ng nucleus compared to here. So again, these are the most important differentiating factors when we compare your immature to your mature cell. So please take note on that because if you are I'm going to ask you the uh, the kind of stages, no, kung ano ba yung immature or mature, at least malalaman natin through this important parameter. So, these are the general rule. Okay? So, this is now the diagram of your hematopoiesis showing now the derivation pathways of your granulocytes from a hematopoiesis poetic stem cell. So, again, from a hematopoietic stem cell, again, magiging sa, under siya sa ating myeloid stem cell, and then, it will go to the different myeloid series. So, this is gonna be your granulo, uh, granulopoiesis. Then, from myeloblast, magiging promyelocyte, myelocyte, metamyelocyte, and then, to your specific granulocyte, whether it's a basophil, eosinophil, or neutrophil. I know you're familiar with already about this one, your myeloid series. Okay, so for our first discussion, we discuss muna natin ang ating neutrophil development. So, unahin natin ang ating neutrophil. Again, your neutrophil development 
actually occurs in the bone marrow. Nasa bone marrow yan. And your neutrophil share, remember that, your neutrophil share a common progenitor with your monocyte. Kaya nga, di ba, under sila sa granulocyte monocyte progenitor. So, isang progenitors lang sila, yung neutrophils natin and your monocyte. The major cytokine that is actually responsible for the stimulation of our neutrophil production is actually your granulocyte colony stimulating factor or your GCF. Again, it is now your GCF that is responsible for the stimulation in terms of the production of your or synthesis of your neutrophil. There are actually three poles, na ating, uh, three poles of your developing neutrophil sa ating bone marrow. Meron tayong hematopoietic stem cells, which is your stem cell pool. We have also your proliferation pool. And lastly, we have your maturation na pool. Sa stem cell na pool, or your hematopoietic stem cells, these are capable of self-renewal and differentiation. Again, of course, stem cells. So therefore, they are capable of self-renewal. Sa, uh, sa ating proliferation pool, or tinatawag natin na mitotic pool, these are the cells that are actively dividing precursors. So from myeloblast to myelocyte. While your maturation pool, ito yung tinatawag natin na storage pool, cells that can undergo nuclear maturation that form the marrow reserve and are available for the release. So from metamyelocyte to mature neutrophil is under your maturation na pool. So we have a better diagram here. Ayan. So again, common myeloid progenitor. So ito yung stem cell pool. Meron tayong tinatawag na hematopoietic stem cell. Your proliferation or mitotic pool. Under dyan, meron tayong common myeloid progenitors. We have your GMP or your granulocyte macrophage progenitors. Progenitors, sorry. We have also your myeloblast, promyelocyte, and your myelocyte. And under your maturation or your storage pool, meron tayong metamyelocyte bond until your mature na cells, your neutrophil. Again, your hematopoietic stem cells, these are capable ng self-renewal and your proliferation pool, these are actively dividing ng mga precursors and your maturation pool, these are cells that are undergoing nuclear maturation. So ngayon, we will be discussing each of those important na mga cells or cells development sa ating neutrophil. Of course, we will start with your myeloblast. Sa ating myeloblast, it is the earliest morphologically identifiable na granulocytic precursor. Again, this is the earliest morphologically identifiable na granulocytic precursor. It has a thin rim of basophilic cytoplasm. Kaya nga, color blue siya kasi it's basophilic yung cytoplasm. And it's very thin kasi na, mas na-occupy ng nucleus ang entire cell kaya mas maliit lang ang ating base, ang ating cytoplasm. Thin rim of your basophilic cytoplasm. And it has, as we can see, meron siyang lazy chromatin pattern and there's a presence of your prominent nucleoli which is two or more. Ang ngayon, Pag immature, there is a presence of nucleoli. Unlike mature cells, there are no presence of nucleoli. Again, NC ratio. Mas mataas yung nucleus dito. Mas na-occupy na yung entire cell. Kaya high NC ratio, it's actually 6 is to 1. And then it's actually, um, the size of the cell is around 40 to 20 micrometer. And it's only 0 to 3% in the normal bone marrow. Of course, this is not found sa ating peripheral blood. It's gonna be abnormal pag nakikita natin to sa peripheral blood. It should not be present sa ating peripheral blood. Nasa bone marrow lamang ang ating myeloblast. Again, merong prominent nucleoli, high NC ratio, scant light blue cytoplasm, and nucleus with immature chromatin. So your myeloblast is actually divided into three. Meron tayong type 1, meron tayong type 2, meron tayong 
type 3. Sige nga, i-compare natin yung type 1, 2, and 3. Yung type 1 natin, they have a fine nuclear chromatin and slightly basophilic cytoplasm. Again, fine nuclear chromatin and slightly basophilic na cytoplasm. And again, 2 to 4 visible nucleoli. But again, di ba, pag sa ating ginagamit natin is light microscope lang, hindi natin yan masyadong na-visualize. And again, there are no visible granules. Sa ating type 2 myeloblast naman, there is already presence of less than 20 primary granules in the cytoplasm. Again, less than 20 primary granules in the cytoplasm. The type 2 myeloblast will show the presence of your dispersed primary granules or tinatawag natin na azurophilic granules sa ating cytoplasm. And then the number of granules will not exceed to 20 per cell. So later on guys, malalaman natin kung ano importance ng ating different granules. We also have your type 3 myeloblast. It has a darker chromatin and more purple cytoplasm. Again, more than 20 granules in the cytoplasm. Sa type 2, less than 20. Pag type 3, more than 20 granules sa ating cytoplasm. So ito, type 2 and your type 3. Diba, it looks like similar. Same, same lang, you know? parang, parang hirap naman i-determine yun, Doc. Again, there are already study that is proposing that you can combine your type 2 and type 3 na blast into a single category. Kaya tinatawag na lang siya na granular blast. Actually, it's a proposed pa lang naman. It's due to the difficulty in distinguishing now your type 2 blast from your type 3 blast. Kaya pinopropose nila na the same category na lang yung type 2 and type 3 as your granular blast. Kasi very difficult to distinguish. No, tingnan natin, parang same-same lang naman. <laughs> so, how about your promyelocyte? Yung promyelocyte natin, they are diffusely basophilic cytoplasm or cytoplasmic, a definite production of your azurophilic granules rich in peroxidases, heterochromatic, heterochromatin begins to appear. Pag sinabi natin heterochromatin, you are referring to the chromatin clumping. So, nagsisimula ng magka-clump ang ating chromatin. Round to oval nucleus, usually eccentric, surrounded by a half. Ano yung half? Yung half, it's actually a, a paranuclear halo or half. Hindi, hindi masyado makikita dito. Pero sa next stage, makikita natin yung ano yung half na yan. Yung NC ratio of actually still 3 is to 1. Malaki pa rin yung ating nuclear ratio compared sa ating cytoplasmic na ratio. 1 to 5% in the bone marrow. And again, this is not seen in a normal peripheral blood. Again, promyelocyte, less prominent na yung ating nuclei. nucleoli. Yung primary granules natin, there's already a presence of primary granules. Your nucleus with presence of immature chromatin. And remember, it becomes heterochromatin. Nagsisimula na siyang maging heterochromatin or your chromatin clumping. Now let's talk about uh, your myelocyte. So yung, yung my myelocyte natin, uh, tinatawag natin na dawn of your neutrophilia. Bakit kaya? Your early myelocyte natin, they have a, uh, they look similar sa ating promyelocyte na describe natin kanina in terms of the size and nuclear characteristics. Except that, the patches of a, mayroong mga patches of grainy pale pink cytoplasm representing your secondary specific granules which begin to be evident in the area of your Golgi apparatus. And this has been referred to as the dawn of your neutrophilia. Again, there is a definite production of your secondary granules. As what you can see, more condensed ang ating chromatin and no presence of nucleoli. Ang NC ratio lumiliit, nagiging 2 is to 1 na lang. And it's around 6 to 17% sa ating bone marrow. And this is not seen sa ating peripheral na blood. Again, myelocyte, intermediate NC. There's already a specific uh, as presence of your secondary specific granules. There is focal, ito yung sinasabi na, ko na half or focal perinuclear 
clearing. And then, merong eccentric mature nucleus with no nucleoli. So again, this is a late myelocyte and are somewhat smaller than your promyelocytes, 15 to 18 millimeters. And the nucleus has considerably more heterochromatin. Again, nucleoli are difficult to see sa ating light microscopy. But again, hindi naman siya makikita sa ating myelocytes. How about our metamyelocyte? Sa ating metamyelocyte, there is a little to non-basophilic cytoplasm and there is now a definite production of our tertiary granules. Diba? Meron tayong primary, secondary, and tertiary. Later on, we will learn ano kayong mga composition or contents ng ating mga granules and what is the purpose of these granules. So, even more clump chromatin, nucleus now is in Dented. So, tignan natin, oh, nucleus natin, nagkakaroon na ng indentation. But as what you can see, indentation less than one half the diameter of the nucleus. So, one half lang kakaunti lamang, less than one half. Hindi siya sumobra, but just less than one half. The nucleus is indented, kidney bean, kidney bean or peanut shape. And si ratio, nagiging 1 is to 1 na. And it's around 3 to 20% sa ating bone marrow. It is seen in the peripheral blood of our newborns but never in the adult. Again, this is not, should not be seen in your adult but could be seen sorry, in your newborns. Again, indentation, less than one half the diameter of nucleus. There is a presence of your secondary granules. Kidney bean shaped nucleus with no nucleoli and a focal perinuclear clearing half is also common. Again, synthesis of your tertiary granules, also known as your gelatinous granules, may begin during this stage. So this is now your metamyelocyte and your monocyte. Diba? Somehow, they have a similar structure kasi kidney shape, tapos malaki din yung monocyte. But what would be our differentiating factor between your metamyelocyte and your monocyte? Una -una, ano napapansin nyo? Sino mas malaki? Of course, it's your metamyelocyte. In terms of size, mas malaki ang ating metamyelocyte. And remember, your monocyte is a granulocyte. So, mas maraming granules ang ating, ang ating metamyelocyte compared sa ating monocyte. Diba? Granulated siya compared here. Tapos, what else? There's also a presence of indentation. Okay, similar man sila ng at presence ng indentation. But again, how can we differentiate it? to the size and the presence of your granules. How about now your bond or your stub na cell? So again, this is a pale blue to pink cytoplasm. Ito, pale blue to pink cytoplasm. Production of secretory granules or vesicles. It has a curved, tingnan nyo, curved bond-shaped nucleus which has not developed a thread-like filament and it's around 9 to 32 percent in our bone marrow and 0 to 5 percent sa ating peripheral na blood the greatest source of variation and discrepancy in your leukocyte morphology that's going to be your pond or stub set so review natin review natin ulit ha yung indentation is greater than one half diameter di ba kanina less than one half itong indentation niya is greater than one half the diameter then, there's also secondary granules. Again, kidney bean-shaped nucleus with mature chromatin and again, no, nucle no nucleoli. So again, Doc, what is the purpose of having this bond cell? Of course, diba, we all know that this is now a bond cell. Pero if, we, if you're going to check that, parang, lang, parang tali siyang segmented no, na or mature na neutrophil. So, medyo mahirap siyang identify. Actually, an elevated bond count was thought to be useful in the diagnosis of patients with infection. However, yung CLSI, they recommended that bonds should be included within the neutrophil counts and not reported as a separate category. Why do you think so? Because of the difficulty in reliably distinguishing bonds from segmented neutrophils. So, hindi talaga mahirap i-distinguish and it's not reliable na separate natin yung bonds sa ating 
segmented or mature neutrophils. So later on, you know, if you're gonna work sa mga primary na mga laboratories, sometimes sineseparate pa talaga nila yung neutrophil sa ating band. So again, ha, remember, it is already been recommended na we should not, we should not separate the category of a band and a band and a uh, segmented or adult or mature na neutrophil. Kasi nga, hindi siya reliable and mahirap siyang i-distinguish. So therefore, if it's at a neutrophil count, whether it's a band or segmented, then count that as a neutrophil or as one category. Pero hindi ko talaga alam. Kasi sa mga, sa mga primary, no? Sa mga primary hospital na nanowork ako dati, sineseparate talaga nila. Sineseparate nila yung band sa segmented. But again, ha, we already know what's, what's, what's correct. Dapat hindi i-separate. So, your mature neutrophil or your segmented neutrophil, pink to rose violet specific granules, they have a coarse clump chromatin Normally, they have 3 to 5 na lobes. So, it's 9 to 15 micrometer. The lifespan is actually 9 to 10 days. And it's 7 to 30% sa ating bone marrow. Sa peripheral blood, the relative count is around 50 to 70%. The absolute count naman is around 2.3 to 8.1. Again, let's review. Neutral staining sa ating granules. Pink cytoplasm. And your nucleus with condensed clump chromatin and it has 3 to 5 lobes connected by a thin chromatin filaments. Again, sige na, i-classify natin ano tong R-net count nito. Anong kategory ito if we are doing to do an R-net counting? 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Group, of course, based lang sa lobe. This is R-net count, group 3. Kasi may tatlong lobes. Very good. So again, this is now your adult na, uh, this is now your segmented na neutrophils. Now, let's proceed with the kinetics. We already know paano, paano nagde-develop ang ating neutrophil. Now, let's talk about its kinetic. Pag sinabi nga na ating kinetic, ano nga yun? We are referring to the different forces that will move the cells into and out of the different body compartments. So we have your bone marrow, transit time niya from, from a hematopoietic stem cell to a myeloblast is actually not measured. But the transit time from myeloblast to myelocyte is actually 6 days. Ang kanyang transit time naman through the maturation pool far is around 4 to 6 days. Sa ating blood, um, meron, it's actually divided into the different pools. No? Meron tayong tinatawag na circulating neutrophil pool and your marginal neutrophil pool. So once in the peripheral blood, your neutrophils now can be divided randomly into a circulating neutral pool and a marginated neutral pool. So in terms of the ratio, sino mas marami? Circulating or marginal? Again, ito yung mga marginal and ito yung circulating natin. The ratio of these two pools is actually equal overall. However, your marginated neutrophils, yung nasa gilid ng ating endothelial cells, your marginated neutrophils in the capillaries of our lungs makes up a considerably larger portion of your peripheral neutrophils. Once your neutrophils are already in the tissues, their lifespan becomes variable depending whether they are responding to a certain infectious or inflammatory agent. So, if walang, if there is an absence of your of your infectious or inflammatory agents, your neutrophil's lifespan is measured only in hours. So, therefore, pag sa tissue, dies after doing its function. Lumiliit lang kay, kanya lifespan. Again, yung circulating neutrophil natin, yung yung freely floating, and yung marginal natin, yung yung taka-adhere sa ating blood, vessel, wall, or your endothelium. Again, okay, you are already familiar with this one, right? Of course, you are, as I remember, sa inflammation natin sa histopathology, this was discussed well by Dr. Ian. So, I am really expecting that you can explain these steps correctly, yung extravasation. 
when we talk about extravasation, these are actually the recruitment of your leukocytes to the site of inflammation. So for today, we we're just talking about the neutrophil. So ano yung, uh, what is the processes of this uh, recruitment or extravasation process ng ating neutrophil. So we have five important steps. Margination, your rolling, your adhesion, your transmigration or tinatawag natin na diapedesis, and lastly, your migration in the tissues toward a chemotactic stimulus. I know you're familiar with this one. Sige, review natin ulit. So I, I have a very nice diagram here. So as what you can see, this is now your leukocyte. Remember your leukocyte. This is now your leukocyte. First step, ano nga yun? First step natin is your margination. So ano yung margination nga? Your leukocyte will assume a more peripheral position along the endothelial surface. So tingnan nyo, from a circulating pool, pupunta siya sa ating marginal na area towards or more peripheral position sa ating endothelial na surface. So ba bakit ba nangyayari ang margination? It happens in response to your hemodynamic disturbances associated with slower blood flow during inflammation. So nagkakaroon tayo ng margination. So first step, margination. Assume a peripheral position. Next step is that it will now undergo leukocyte endothelial interaction. Kasi nga, nasa kilid na siya, no? So magkakaroon na tayo ng leukocyte endothelial interaction. Yan yung tinatawag natin na rolling and adhesion. So how will we differentiate rolling and adhesion? Unang-una, rolling ang mangyayari. Sa rolling, this one, magro-roll siya dito. It's a transient binding and detachment of your leukocytes to the endothelium and the interaction is only very weak. So, very basic. Kung kumbaga, nagro-roll talaga siya, no? kay transient binding, then magdi-detach siya sa ating endothelium. So, kaya nga, tinawag siyang rolling. Pero yung interaction natin dito is very weak. And again, sa sinabi nating rolling, anong addition molecules natin? It's your selectin. Again, selectin, selectin, your LEP, your LEP, that's your rolling. The next step is now your adhesion. Ito na, adhesion. Ano nangyayari sa adhesion, Doc Vaughn? Ang addition natin, it's actually a firm adhesion of your leukocytes to the endothelium. So, there is now a firm adhesion. Didikit siya, and therefore, the interaction is strong. And ano naman ang ating addition molecule dito? Yung addition molecule natin is your integrin. So, again, ha? Rolling, selectin. Adhesion, integrin. So, remember that. And then, it will now undergo the process of diapedesis or your transmigration. Ano yung diapedesis na yan, Doc Vaughn? Your diapedesis is the migration of your adherent leukocytes across the endothelium. Ano ang ating addition molecule? So, this is now your diapedesis. This is now your addition molecule natin is your CD31 or your PCAMP. One. So again, review ha, rolling, selectin, adhesion, integrin, diapedesis, your CD31, and your PCAM1. And lastly, ang last step natin, naka-migrate na yung WPC natin towards the tissue. Ano nang mayayari? Chemotaxis. It's now the movement of your leukocytes towards the site of injury induced by or influenced by a chemical stimulus, which could be your chemokine. So, there are chemotactic agents that may be produced by the microorganism. So, pwede yung microorganism mismo ang nagproproduce ng chemotactic agent, or pwede by the damaged cells, or other leukocytes such as your lymphocytes or other phagocytes. And then, your WBC will move towards the area. Again, ha, that's very basic. Again, review natin. Ano yung mga steps natin? Margination. Mag-assume siya ng peripheral position. And then, magkakaroon na siya ng leukocyte endothelial interaction through rolling and adhesion. Sa rolling, it's only transient and there's a detachment. And then, sa adhesion natin, there is already a strong interaction. And then, afterwards, magkakaroon na ng migration ng ating leukocyte through diapedesis. And then, there will be now chemo taxis could be released from the microorganism or from the damaged cell or from the leukocyte itself and it will go directly to the site of infection.
very basic. I know you're already familiar with that. Can I review? Rolling, ano nga yung addition molecule? Rolling, RS, selectin, adhesion, AI, integrins. In your diapedesis, CD31 and PCOM1. Please remember that these are the most high yield part. Kasi paulit-ulit, if you're going to med school, yan pa rin ang i-discuss sa inyo, promise. <laughs> So now let's talk about the granules. Kanina narinig nyo kung kailan na produce yung primary granules, kailan na produce yung secondary granules, and your tertiary granules. You already know kailan nyo na produce. Pag sinabi natin granules, it's a library of your innate immune proteins. Excuse me. And these are one of the function of your neutrophil. So again, excuse me. <coughs> We all know that the major function of your neutrophil is phagocytosis and destructions of your foreign material and microorganisms. The process involves seeking, which is now your chemotaxis, mutility, and diapedesis that we discussed a while ago, and destruction. If remember, your neutrophil is a phagocyte cells. It can undergo phagocytosis and digestion. So therefore, how paano ba ma-destroy ma ng ating neutrophil ang ating mga different microorganisms? Of course, it is now through the different innate immune proteins. We have your primary granules, your secondary granules, and your tertiary granules. These are bactericidal molecules. For example, your lysocyte. This has a ability to, to somehow... Um, destroy the cell wall of certain bacteria. It's an antibactericidal ability. So each of these, uh, each of these granules will have a specific function. For example, your gelatinases. It actually degrades a denatured collagen as well as your type four and type five collagen, and can activate your chemokines such as your interleukin eight. So, lahat ng ito are very essential for it to to do its function in destroying the different microorganism or foreign bodies sa ating katawan. So kindly uh, familiarize this important na mga granules ng ating cells, ng ating neutrophil. So let's talk about the innate immune system or a function of your neutrophil as an innate immune system. Of course, again, phagocytosis. So again, naka-transfer, uh, naka-recruit naka, naka, na natin ang ating neutrophil from the, from the blood going to the specific tissues. Now, ano nang gagawin ng ating neutrophil? Diba kanina, from these different processes na diniscuss natin, na nag-extravasate ng ating WBC until such time na nakita niya na or napunta na siya sa site of infection, ano nang gagawin ng ating neutrophil? Now, this is gonna be your phagocytosis your phagocytosis will have different um will have a different steps also so ano ba nangyayari sa ating phagocytosis unang una there will be recognition and attachment so your phagocyte receptors bind to a certain foreign molecular patterns and opsonins as your antibodies and complement components so tingnan natin sa diagram ito yung ating for example, infection na caused by your SRUs. And this is your, and this is your, ito, ito yung ating uh, phagocyte. Anong ginagawa na phagocyte natin? Phagocyte receptors, may mga phagocyte receptors tayo dito. Phagocyte receptors bind to a certain foreign molecular patterns, pwedeng directly sa ating bacteria, or could be attached to the opsonins such as the antibody. So, ito yung antibody. So, pwede directly sa antibody and to the different complement components. That's your recognition and attachment. How about ingestion? So, ang ingestion naman natin, your sodophodia. Sodophodia formation to engulf the pathogen. So, there will be sodophodia formation. So, ano yung sodophodia inform uh, uh, formation, Doc Vaughn? So, yung ingestion natin, remember, sodopodia are extended around the foreign particles and it closes it within a phagosome. So, again, i-engulf niya na ang ating, ang ating pathogen. So, there's now engulf na titinan There's already a phagosome, in, uh, phagosome formation or engulfment. Ito na yung tinatawag natin na engulfment or phagosome. Now, dito sa phagosome, it is pulled toward the center of the cell by polymerization of your actin and your myosin and by micro 
tubules. Then, anong mangyayari? Na-engulf niya na, there's already phagosome. Again, first, ano ngayon? I-re-recognize niya, then mag attach siya. And then, papasok na siya, i-engulf na siya through a pseudophodia formation. Ano nang next step? It's gonna be your killing and digestion happens next. And how do we kill this microorganism? It's through oxygen-dependent killing and oxygen-independent killing. So let's talk about first your oxygen-dependent killing. Sa, ox sa ating oxygen-dependent killing, there will be formation of the phagosome. I mean, the formation ng ating phagosome allows the reduced nicotinamide, ito, reduced nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate oxidase complex within the phagosome membrane to assemble. So, mag assemble itong ating non-PH oxidase. And what will happen? This will now lead to the generation of your ROS or your reactive oxygen species such as your hydrogen peroxide which is now converted into hypochlorite by myeloperoxidase. Kumbaga, gagawa tayo ng ROS. So, we will be able to produce your hydrogen peroxide and by the action of your MPO, it will become also your hypochlorite. Again, what is the purpose of this one? It is a secondary ROS and is toxic to our orga microorganism. So that's now your oxygen-dependent process. How about your oxygen-independent step, Doc Vaughn? Yung oxygen-independent step, very basic lang, the pH within the pagosome becomes alkaline and then neutral. Sorry, excuse me. The pH at which digestive enzymes work. And then, your primary and your secondary lysosomes or your granules, your primary and secondary, ano nangyayari? Will now fuse to the phagosome. So, magfo-fuse sila sa ating phagosome. Ito yung ating mga granules. It will now fuse sa ating phagosome and will empty the hydrolytic enzymes and other bactericidal molecules into our phagosome. So, that's the basic function of now of your different granules. So, it will have an antimicrobial property. So, kumbaga, that's now your oxygen-independent killing using now your different granules. I hope that is clear, ha? Oxygen-dependent and oxygen-independent killing. Again, okay, ito yung diniscuss natin kanina. I know you're already familiar with this one, the oxygen-dependent killing. No nga yung oxygen-dependent, it will form your hydrogen peroxide and then your hydrogen peroxide by the action of your MPO producing your hypochlorite and this is now your secondary ROS which is toxic to our microorganism. And later on, when you reach the different WBC disorder, no, meron yung uh, type ng WBC disorder na meron problem sa MPO. So, you will take note on that but remember, ang MPO is very important para to produce now your secondary ROS. Of course, kung wala yung MPO, we cannot produce your ROS. So therefore, magiging mahihirapan ang ating neutrophil na patayin yung ating organism. So, mga patients natin na may problem sa MPO deficiency or problem, nagkakaroon sila ng recurrent infection. Yan, recurrent infection. You will learn that in your different WBC disorders. What else before we end our neutrophil? Another function, last two functions of your neutrophil. We have your neutrophil extracellular traps. Ano yung extra neutrophil extracellular traps, Dr. Von? It's the second function of neutrophil is the degeneration of your nets. Ito yung tinatawag na nets or your neutrophil extracellular traps, which are to extracellular thread-like structures that is believed to represent chains of your nucleosomes from your unfolded na nuclear chromatin DNA. And these structures have enzymes from your neutrophil granules attached to it. So, yung mga yung extracellular traps nito, meron itong mga granular uh, granules na dito and be able to trap and kill now your gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So, matatrap sila dito and plus may granules. So, therefore, there is a antibactericidal na activity. So, Basically, your nets are generated at the time that neutrophils die as a result of 
antibacterial activity. So, yung term natin na natawag nito is your netosis. It has been used to describe this unique form of your neutrophil cell death that results in the release of your nets. So, again, ginagawa lang ito. Nets are generated at the time that neutrophil will die. Grabe no, mamamatay pa siya pero may purpose pa rin siya. Next, the last function of your neutrophil is a secretory function. Ano yung secretory function ng ating neutrophil? So, neutrophils are a source of your transcobalamin I or R binder protein. So, ito, R protein. So, your neutrophils is a source of this R protein or your R or I binder protein. This is actually necessary for the proper absorption of your vitamin B12. And also, in addition to that, they are also a source of variety of your cytokines. So again, ano nga yun? Yung neutrophil natin is a source of your R binder protein. Anong function ng R binder protein? Kasi nga, anong nangyayari? Diba? When we eat a food that is rich in protein, may vitamin B12 dyan, and then it will be cleaved by the enzyme. Of course, your protein will be reabsorbed by the body. And your B12, for it to be reabsorbed by the intestine, kakailanganin niya yung R protein na which is ang source natin is your neutrophils. And this B12, our protein helps your B12 to transfer it to the small intestine. So that's the secretory function of your neutrophil. Actually, no, ngayon ko lang din ito nalaman. Kung hindi ako nagturo, hindi ko din ito alam. <laughs> so ang alam lang natin kasi your neutrophil will just fight infection and all. I really don't know. May meron pala siya ganitong secretory function. You know what, no? I am also learning sa mga pinagagawa ko sa mga pinuturo ko. It's very nice. Learning naman is a process, di ba? Of course, hindi naman all the time, as a teacher, you already know everything. So, as as I read, no, there are, meron taling mga bagay-bagay na I still do not know. So, learning is really a lifelong process. Forever. Forever na tayong mag-aaral. Okay, that's it. That's now the function of your neutral field. We already Learn the development, the kinetics, and the function of your neutrophil. Now, let's proceed with your eosinophil. So, this is now your eosinophil development. Again, your eosinophil development is actually similar lang naman sila in terms of descri describe natin kanina sa neutrophils. And evidence indicates that your eosinophil arise from a common myeloid progenitor. And your eosinophil... The lineage of your eosinophil is established through the interaction between the different cytokines, your interleukin-3, your 5, your GMCSF, and the three important transcription factors, your GATA-1, your PU-1, and with your EBP. But ang pinaka-important yung dapat malaman natin is your interleukin-5 because this is critical for your eosinophil growth and survival. So kung meron dapat tatandaan, ito yung tatlong to, and your interleukin-5. Okay? Again, myeloblast, it's microscopically the same as your neutrophil myeloblast. Yung pro-myelocyte namin, again, same pa rin. They have the same, microscopically the same with your neutrophil, neutrophil na pro-myelocyte. But, how can we differentiate a pro-myelocyte na, na eosinophil versus your neutrophil na pro-myelocyte? Sa eosinophil, cytochemically different because of the presence of your charcot laden crystal protein. Again, pag sa eosinophil na promyelocyte, even though that they are microscopically similar lamang sa neutrophil na promyelocyte, but in your eosinophil promyelocyte, cytochemically different siya because of the presence of your charcot laden crystal protein. Please remember that. Your myelocyte, same nuclear characteristics with neutrophil myelocyte but contains large, pale reddish, and orange secondary granules. Your metamyelocyte and your bond secondary granules increase in number, secretory vesicles appear, and there's also lipid bodies and small granules also appear. Sa ating mature naman na eosinophil, it makes up 1-3% to of your nucleated cells in the bone marrow and your peripheral blood. Usually, it is bilobed nucleus and your cytoplasm contains a refractive orange-red secondary granules. 
Usually, no, madali lang talaga ma-determine kung is sinophilia kasi pag it's it's orange or parang pink, cytoplasm, it's, you already know that it's eosinophil plus meron maraming granules. So let's talk about its kinetics. So again, it's transient time from your last myelocytic division to release of your myos, uh, mature eosinophil is 3.5 days and has a half-life of 18 hours sa ating circulation. Pag na-reach na, na yung tissue, it will only have 2 to 5 days. Again, tissue destination ng ating eosinophil in your columnar epithelial surface sa ating respiratory, sa ating gastrointestinal, and your genito urinary tract. So, these are the different granules. Sobrang dami, no? Ng ating eosinophil, eosinophil granules. Meron tayong primary. We have your secondary. We have your small lysosomal granules, your lipid bodies, and your storage vesicles. Again, your eosinophil granules are full of a large number of previously synthesized proteins including your cytokines, meron tayong mga chemokines, growth factors, and your cationic proteins. Again, Marami tayong, pero ang pinaka-important na tatandaan natin is yung charcot-laden crystal na protein. Again, no? very very specific yan sa ating eosinophil. Again, for example, remember also your major basic protein. Kasi yung major basic protein, ang yung eosinophil natin, siya yung nagre-regulate sa ating muscle function through the release of your major basic protein. It will cause the muscle the granulation as well as cytokine production and they also produce your nerve growth factor that promotes your mast cell survival and your activation. So remember your major basic protein. So in terms of its uh, function, another function yeah is to degranulate. Of course, pag sinabi natin yung degranulate, to, to release its different granules. So, how can eosinophil release its granules? So, meron tayong different processes that eosinophil can perform or do. We have first, you have your classical exocytosis, your compound exocytosis, your piecemeal degranulation, and your cytolysis or your necrosis. Ano ba yung ating classical na exocytosis? Yung classical na exocytosis natin, your granules will fuse with your plasma membrane. So, mag-fuse siya automatically sa ating plasma membrane. Pag compound exocytosis dito, diagram na to, your granules will fuse with each other, then with the plasma membrane. How about your piecemeal degranulation? Your secretory vesicles will remove a specific protein. So, in short, specific protein, kaya piecemeal. So, very specific. It will just remove a specific protein from your granules. Then, it will now fuse with the plasma membrane. Ito yung tinatawag natin na eosinophil sombrero vesicle. Nice. And lastly, we have your cytolysis. This is now the spilling of your cellular content. So, second most common observed mode of your degranulation. Of course, the cell your eosinophil will die because mag undergo siya ng necrosis. Spilling now of your cellular contents. So, these are the different uh, function also of your, eosinus, uh, of your eosinophil. First, we all know, pag hallmark of allergy, that's the function of your eos uh, eosinophil. And also, it has an immune regulation function. Bakit kaya nagkakaroon siya ng immune regulation na function? Remember, it has the initiation of your type 1 or type 2 immune response due to their ability to rapidly secrete your preformed cytokines in a stimulus-specific manner. Of course, it is also able to do as an APC or your antigen-presenting cell as part of its adaptive immunity. Because remember, ha, your eosinophil are capable of acting as antigen-presenting cells and they can promote the proliferation of your effector T cells. Your eosinophil is also involved in acute and chronic allograft rejection. It has a poor phagocytic ability compared to your neutrophil. It will also involve in your plasma cell survival. Even though 
pag eosinophil, di ba, alam natin, it's a parasitic, but it will also have uh, involvement, somehow involvement sa ating viral infection, as well as in your platelet eosinophil interaction. Again, tingnan natin, eosinophil involves in cell activation, humoral immunity, different tissue remodeling and repair, immune response and regulation because again, production ng mediator, antigen presentation, metabolic homeostasis, as well as host defense such as your bacteria, viruses, fungi, and parasite. Again, not only with the parasites, ha, it could also have in effects ating bacteria, viruses, and fungi through the different granules na nare-release ng ating eosinophil. So again, we're familiar with this, no? Ito talaga alam na lang, eosinophil, parasitic killing. Parasitic killing. Of course, that is correct. Parasitic killing through your IgE response. And again, your IgE axis evolved to a count to counter now your parasites, then which are too large to be phagocytized. Ano bang nangyayari? Diba? This is our worm. Of course, sobrang laki. Hindi, yan, hindi naman yan kakayanan, kakayanin ng ating mga immunoglobulins, or specifically your IgE. So what will happen? Your IgE, this has a FC receptor. I has an FC and then yung eosinophil natin, meron siyang FC receptor. So kakabit siya sa ating IgE and will now release the different enzymes or granules. Of course, your lysozymes will help in the killing of this helminthic or your worm. So again, your eosinophil production is increased by your parasitic helminths and there are in vitro studies that have shown that your eosinophil is capable of destroying this tissue invading helminths through the secretion of your major basic protein. Remember that ha? because of the release of your major basic protein and your eosinophil tat ionic protein as well as the production of your ROS or your reactive oxygen species. There is also a suggestion that your eosinophils play a role in preventing reinfection. Ito na yung sinasabi natin na charcot laden crystals. Ito yung crystalloids containing galactin 10. Di ba? Pag, pag marinig yung charcot laden, unang isipin nyo that that's the function of your eosinophil. So, ano ba yung eosinophil? Ano ba yung crystal na to? These crystals are actually formed by the fusion of your... Excuse me, sorry. Um, these crystals, again, are formed by the fusion of your eosinophil granules that contains large amount of your charcot-laden protein or your lysophospholipase. Again, these charcot-laden crystals are seen in conditions associated with eosinophil. So, pag pataas ang count ng ating eosinophils or what we term as your eosinophilia, then there's a chance that we can form these crystals. Kasi nga, these are just fusion ng ating different eosinophil granules. Kaya nga, mapapansin nyo, di ba? Primary mediator natin sa mga allergic is your eosinophils. So, mga asthmatic patient. So, usually sa mga asthmatic patients, meron kami nakikita sa kanilang sputum na numerous granular like structure or slender crystals. Yan yung charcot laden crystals. Now let's proceed to our last, last na talaga tayo, last cells. This is now your basophil. So sa ating basophil, so first, di ba somehow we are confused with a basophil and your mast cell. Kaya parang almost same sila ng itsura, same sila ng function. How can we differentiate ba ng ating basophil sa ating mast cells? Again, your basophil, ang basophil natin, and mast cells, these are two cells with a morphologic and functional similarities. However, your basophils are the true leukocyte. Ha? Tandaan ha, of course, basophil are true leukocyte because they are they mature sa ating bone marrow and nagsi-circulate siya sa ating blood as mature cells with granules. Whereas, ang ating mast cells, they are just precursor. I mean, the mast cell precursors will leave the bone marrow and use the blood as a transit system to gain the access to the tissues where they mature. Kung baga, gagamitin niya yung blood mag, as a transit way or a transit system para makapunta siya sa tissue wherein magmamature ang ating muscles sa ating tissue. 
I hope that is clear. Basophil differentiate under the influence of a number of your cytokines. So first thing I discuss muna is your basophil. Again, your basophil will differentiate under the influence of the different number of cytokines, including your interleukin-3 and as well as your TSLP. Ito yung tinatawag natin na thymic stroma uh, lympho, lymphofoetin. So yung IgE-dependent by the action of your interleukin-3 and non-IgE-dependent by the action of your thymic stromal lipo, uh, lymphofoetin. Sorry, lymphofoetin. Ang trabaho ng ating TSP or your lymphofoetin, it will now promote your interleukin-3 independent basophil hematopoiesis. Again, staging is not done. Bakit kaya hindi natin pwede, hindi natin ginagawa yung staging sa ating basophil? What do you think? It's because, again, very difficult to observe and have not been well characterized. Your basophils will, uh, your basophils will therefore be described simply as immature basophil and mature basophil. So, yan lang. Pag basophil, hindi natin, classic, hindi natin kailangan maklassify kung anong, anong cell siya. But all we have to do is identify that whether it is a mature basophil or an immature basophil. Kasi nga, mahirap maklassify. Mahirap, hindi masyadong napag-aralan. Kasi nga, yung basophil naman natin, napaka-liit lang na concentration natin sa ating dugo. So, your immature basophil, it's round to lobulated nuclei. Slightly condensed chromatin in the cytoplasm is blue, contains large blue-black secondary granules. Again, ito yung sinasabi natin, yung basophil-dependent allergic inflammation. How can we perform your activation of your basophils? It is through your IgE-dependent or pwede din siyang IgE-independent. Pag IgE-dependent, of course, your IgE is needed for us to do now your cytokine secretion. Ito yung tinatawag na IgE arm basophils. Pag IgE independent, no need for an IgE. All you have to do is your cytokines will attach to that receptor through your TSLP, your lymphofoetin, and therefore, you can now produce your different secretion ng ating cytokine. So just remember, yung activation ng basophil can be IgE dependent versus IgE independent. Pag IgE dependent, Ito yung with the presence of IgE. Pag IgE independent by the help of your TSLP. Ano nga, yung, ano nga yung interleukin na tutulong sa ating IgE dependent? It's your, anong interleukin yun? It's your interleukin 3. So dito, interleukin 3, dito is your TSLP. How about your mature basophil? It is lobulated nucleus, often obscured by granules. As in, super granulated na na siya. Gani-gani, guwapo mo kayo na eh. Makita pa ni mo yung mga nucleus. Basically, no, in sa practical, sobrang hirap and hindi mah mahinahirapan tawa ka maka-identify ng basophil. Kasi nga, hindi siya common. Very rare siya nakita. And usually, natapos na ako ng 100 na dati, practical namin. Natapos na namin yung 100 counting. Wala, dito ko yung makita ang basophil sa amin na buhat. Nagabot ko ako one. At least may nakita daw ako kung no, hai. Pero wala ko na ako nakita. Because it's very rare. Again, the clump chromatin, it has a colorless cytoplasm with a large blue-black granules and the granules are water-soluble. Kaya in a normal counting, no, usually 0 to 1, 0 to 2 lang yan siya. How about the basophil kinetics? It is poorly understood because of their rarity in the bone marrow. Kaya nga, sinasabi ko, very rare in the circulation. Has a lifespan of 60 hours, your interleukin-3 and 25 are anti-apoptotic. So, tutulong ito na mag-increase ng lifespan sa ating basophil. So, your basophil, meron tayong tinatawag na mga basophil granules, yung mga secondary granules. We have your histamine, your leukotriene, interleukin. Again, we, your basophil have different granules din. As what you can see, yung mga histamine natin, yung mga leukotrienes natin, these are inflammatory mediators, di ba? They're very common sa ating, pag may mga inflammation, your basophil is really involved. The contents of your basophil granules are still not well known. For example, your basophil can be induced to produce your mediator of your allergic inflammation, your, which is known as your granzyme B. Wala siya dito. I'm so sorry. Yung granzyme B natin, which is produced as a mediator sa ating allergic inflammation. This is, 
This is also an example of your basophil na granules, your granzyme B. Meron na tayo sa ating muscles that can induce your basophils to produce and release a retinoic acid. So, this is a regulator of your of your immune and resident cells sa ating allergic diseases. So, again, hindi, wala, din tayo, wala din retinoic dito. Of course, marami pa yung mga different granules sa ating basophil. Again, these are the important functions na ating basophil, no? Allergy, again, this is an initiator of your allergy. It is also involves ating adaptive immunity as an antigen presenta presentation or antigen presenting cells. It can also phagocytize but poorly. It is also involved in your angiogenesis. Kasi nga, ano yung angiogenesis na yan? Your basophil play a role in your angiogenesis to the expression of your vascular endothelial growth factor or your VEGF and its receptor. So yung angiogenesis meaning you will increase the formation of your blood vessels. And then, okay, it is also involved in the different helminthic infection. And lastly, your lymphocyte-mediated delayed hypersensitivity. Again, your basal pills are capable sa ating, sa pag-release ng large quantities of your subtype 2 helper T-cell cytokines such as your interleukin-4 and interleukin-3. So, makaka-release siya ng interleukin-4 and your interleukin-3 that will regulate now your your T helper 2 immune response. So, kaya nga, nagkaka one function ng ating basophil is your immunomodulation. Kasi nga, yung interleukin-4 and your interleukin-13 natin, it will regulate your T helper 2 cell immune response. Kaya, tinatawag natin na one of its function as immunomodulation. Your basophils also induce your B cells to synthesize your Ig. Again, your B cells, iniinduce niya daw yung ating plasma cells or B cells na magproduce ng ating IgE. And again, another function niya, yung VEGF or tissue remodeling. Ito yung tinatawag natin na angiogenesis. It will promote more formation of your blood cells that is essential for tissue remodeling. Again, mediator ng ating different na mga allergic reactions, yung basophil natin, through your histamine and your leukotrakins. And also, it is involved in late phase allergic response. And remember ha, your muscles are the effectors of IgE-mediated chronic allergic inflammation. Your basophil's function as initiator. So, kumbaga, si, si basophil is an initiator of your allergic inflammation through the release of different cytokines whereas your mast cells are the effectors of your IgE mediated chronic allergic inflammation. So again, tingnan natin ang function ng ating mast cell. Yung mast cell naman, sige, unahin muna natin kung ano yung nag, uh, nag, nagpapamature sa ating mast cell. So it's your kit like that. So, the major cytokine that is responsible for the mast cell maturation and differentiation is your kit ligand or your stem cell factor. Your kit, kit ligand is a stem, stem cell factor. Your, it is microscopically similar to the basophils, diba? Ito yung discuss natin kanina. It's somehow similar lamang sa ating basophil, but it's bigger. Your progenitors originate in the bone marrow and spleen. And it has a longer lifespan than our basophil. It also contains your granules such as your protease, your peptidoglycan, and your cytokines in its granules. Ano nga diniscuss natin kanina sa muscle? It is, is it a leukocyte or not? Your muscles are not considered to be leukocytes. Ha? Remember that. They are tissue effector cells of your allergic responses and inflammatory reaction. Again, it is, they are, your mast cells are effector cells. They're just an effector cells para sa ating different na allergic responses and inflammatory reaction. So, just a short description lamang sa ating development and function sa ating mast cell. Number one, their precursors circulate in the peripheral blood for a brief period on their way to their tissue destination. Kasi nga, di ba, gagamitin nyo yung blood para lang 
maka-transit, just a transit system para makapunta sa tissue kung saan siya magmamature. Again, muscles have several phenotypic and functional similarities with both your basophils and your eosinophils. In terms naman sa functions ng ating muscles, marami. We have for allergy, for inflammation, for antigen presentation, as anti-inflammatory, for immunosuppression, as well as for immunologic gatekeepers. So again, paano ba, paano ba nare-release ang ating uh, mga granules or paano ba na-activate ang ating mast cells? So ito yung tinatawag natin na resting mast cells. So yung resting mast cells contains granules containing merong mga histamine and other inflammatory mediators. So, paano siya nag activate Paano ba na activate ang ating muscle? Multivalent antigen cross-link bound IgE antibody. So, there is now a cross-link bound IgE antibody which will cause now the release of your granular contents. Again, as a result of your cross-linking of your IgE on the muscle surface by a specific allergen, there will be now a release of a wide variety of your lipid mediators, proteases, proteoglycans, and cytokines. Again, muscles can also be activated. Again, hindi lang pala siya IgE, IgE na crosslinks ang makakapag-activate sa kanya. Pwede din siyang ma-activate. Your muscles can also be activated independently of your IgE, which will now leads to the inflammatory reaction. So, hindi pwede lang Pwede siyang Ig dependent or pwede siyang Ig independent. Again, your muscles can also function as your antigen presenting cells to induce differentiation of your T helper 2 cells. Therefore, your muscles can act both as an innate and adaptive immunity. And in addition to that, your muscles can have an anti-inflammatory and immunosuppressive function. Thus, they can both enhance the, both, uh, therefore, your muscles can enhance or suppress features of your immune responses. Diba? Ang, ang, ang alam lang natin, muscles, inflammatory, more of formation of, uh, of inflammatory materials. But your muscles can also act as an immunosuppressant. No? Kasi ang alam lang talaga natin, ang muscle is mag induce ng immune immune infl or inflammation but it could also cause suppression of your immune again ha remember that ha meron siyang anti-inflammatory meron siyang immunosuppressive na function thus it can both enhance and suppress the features of your immune responses please remember that dili lang siya for for formation of your inflammation but it could also cause an anti-inflammatory reaction or immunosuppression. Remember that, please. Okay? I guess that ends our discussion for today. So for the next sync, uh, for the next active for the next week, sa week 2 natin, dun yun naman natin madi-discuss yung mga mononuclear cells including your lymphocytes, including your monocytes. So again, if you have any clarifications or questions, please do not hesitate to PM me anytime. Okay? Nothing else. So I guess that ends my lecture video. Thank you everyone. Have a great day. Keep safe pa rin. Hopefully, you know, face to face na tayo kasi nga, nalaman ko parang, di ba, nag okay na yung chat. So hopefully, next semester or next school year, we will see each other hopefully face to face okay if you have any clarifications please pm you lang ko anytime okay thank you everyone happy aral